and the f is shit. We've had the Pixel 6 since launch. Nine months later, we're pretty damn happy after downgrading to the Pixel 6a. Let us explain. Goedendag, we're DHRME, Dutch hosts review magnificent equipment. All right, let's start with the size of this thing because the six, since I've had it, I've always struggled with the size. Maybe it's my small hands, but uh, I'm not the only one because it's a big device. At 6.4 inches, it's, it's chunky in the hand. I've always noticed this, I couldn't really use it one-handed properly. And the other thing is, you always need a case. So you're gonna be putting on a case on this, which makes it a lot bulkier. You know, there were times that I would remove the case because I felt it was nicer in the hand without it. And relative to it with the case, it felt smaller in the hand. But this thing is slippery as hell. So that case went back on pretty quickly. So once the Pixel 6a uh, launched, I didn't expect much and I didn't think the difference would be huge at 6.1 inches. But you know what, The Verge, who we'll recently mentioned this, might be onto something. They said 6.1 inches might be the new sweet spot for small phones. You know, iPhones are also 6.1 inches for the base model. Personally, I'd prefer something smaller, but you know, I'll pick 6.1 inches every time in the land of giant smartphones. And it's not only the size, because there's also a weight difference. And of course, a bigger phone will weigh more than a smaller phone, but there's also glass on the back of the Pixel 6 compared to plastic on the 6a. So that is something you definitely notice in the hand, in your pocket, just, you know, in general. And we get it, it might sound like a first world problem, but you know, it's super important because this is something you use a day in, day out. And you know, that little bit of extra weight, you're gonna feel in your hand if you're, you know, using it to type or in bed, you know, holding it up. Only when you like downgrade or, you know, get a phone which is lighter, do you realize how much of that weight difference actually matters. And so overall, you know, the size is more compact in my hand i'm able to reach sides a lot easier it's lighter so it's just something i'd like to grab much faster i tend to do that much faster as well and so that made me realize that you know i've been using this for so long the pixel 6 that i've actually just kind of compromised i thought this is the flagship of google i'm going to use it i should like it because i always liked pixel devices but only when I came to the 6A did I realize, wow, I should have done this much earlier. Yeah, this feels great. The size, I keep coming back to it, is a big difference because it's like, you know, wearing jeans all day, which are either too tight or too loose. No one likes that, right? And I touched upon it a little bit that I'm a huge fan of Pixel devices. And so this one, I always struggled with enjoying uh, and really having the feeling like, hey, I have a Pixel device. I just felt like I had this massive phone that happened to kind of have the Pixel experience. Whereas on the Pixel 6a, everything comes together a lot nicer and I really feel like I'm using a Pixel phone. It's the size, for sure. It's the price, which we'll get to in a little bit. It's the camera and the kinds of pictures it makes, which we'll get to as well. And of course, the pure Android experience. And that in its entirety as a package deal really makes it feel like a Pixel phone. The 6 really felt off to me. Uh, but then again, my last Pixel phone was the Pixel 3, so I've skipped a couple of generations. But still, to me, the Pixel 6a really feels like a Pixel. Now, speaking of the price, when we got this at launch, we paid 800 bucks for it, right? And this one, we paid 465. Now, huge difference, almost twice the price. Of course, now it, the difference isn't as big. I think there's about 100, 150 bucks difference between the two. But with such a big difference in price, it, it you know, you compromise on a few things and we'll get to that, but uh, it's something to consider. For that price difference, you know, you can get yourself some nice noise canceling headphones and we talk about those a lot on this channel. So check out that as well. Well, do we miss anything from the six? Well, the first thing that you might think of is the refresh rate. Uh, to be honest, we're not MKBHD, so <laughs> we're not refresh rate geeks. Uh, 60 Hertz is plenty for us. Of course, your mileage may vary. Uh, so the 90 Hertz on the Pixel 6 versus the 60 Hertz on the Pixel 6a, nope. We always had it on 60 Hertz anyway, because we shoot the screen and our camera aperture is also set to that. So no, we did not miss that. Wireless charging, a bit of a different story. Yes, we do miss it on the 6a. That's something if, it's baked into your everyday life. You are going to notice when you have a 6A instead of a 6. But more than the wireless charging, what we actually missed is the fast charging speeds. 
Um, the 6A fast charging is just not as good as the 6. That is a difference that really matters in everyday use. And battery life on the 6 and the 6A for us is very, very similar. There might be a bit of a difference, but actually practically in terms of when you charge it and when you take it out of the house, it's identical. And there's this quick tap feature on the back of any of the Pixel phones, which where you can double tap to have it do something. And I always used to set it on bringing down the notification shade because for obvious reasons, I could never reach the notification shade. So there is a swipe on the screen way, but the double tap was pretty handy as well. And what I liked about the six is that the sensitivity was perfect on default. Uh, I had no problems with it, but on the 6A, when I put it on default, it was too sensitive. So when using it in the car for navigation, any small bump on the road would basically bring down the notification shade every single time. So every time I would have to swipe up the notification shade while driving, which isn't ideal. So I went into the settings and I, and I changed the sensitivity, but then it was not sensitive enough. Maybe I'm being too sensitive about this feature. Let's move on. Okay, but between the 6 and the 6A, what is unfortunately the same? What hasn't changed, improved, or gotten worse? The biggest gripe I had on the Pixel 6, and you can check that out in this video as soon as I upgraded from an iPhone, uh, was the fingerprint scanner. There's no face unlock and the fingerprint scanner is shit. You know, there were people who said it kind of improved with software updates and they said it was kind of better on the Pixel 6A compared to the 6, but nope it's still as bad. I don't see a difference between the two. And you know, I'm just not happy about it because there are so many phones which are generations older than these that have just figured out the whole unlocking part. It shouldn't be this difficult. And another thing that stayed the same is heat management. Unfortunately, both of these devices tend to get hot while using it, either when you're using the camera for a little too long or you just happen to use the phone a little bit more you notice it. It sometimes is kind of weird because you're not really using very process intensive uh, apps or tasks or whatever, and it still gets really hot. It could be a Google Tensor thing, but it is uh, it is what it is. It's still there on the Pixel 6a and the 6. And finally, it, neither of them fold. Yeah. Now let's talk about cameras. Even though the 6a uses an older 12 megapixel sensor, there's just something about a tried and trusted sensor that has been put through its paces and produces reliable results. Well, since both have the Google Tensor chipset, you get all the same camera features like night sight, HDR+, etc. I mean, sure, the newer 50 megapixel sensor on the 6 does give you more detail in certain situations, but in daily use, the 6A is just solid. In fact, in certain cases like edge detection on portrait mode with hair, the 6A sometimes even outperforms the 6. And this is the kicker. Both share the exact same ultra-wide lens and selfie camera. So the actual difference is only on the main sensor. Now don't get us wrong, the 6 has a better overall camera system, but in daily use, for our particular use case, we'll take that small difference for the other trade-offs that come with the 6. You've been feeling good after a downgrade, and we've been DHRME. Namaste.